Here we discuss ring homomorphisms, so let's start with the definition. Let R and S be rings, then we say a function f from R to S is a homomorphism if the following two properties are satisfied, that is, for any a and b in the ring, f of a plus b is equal to f of a plus f of b, and f of a times b is equal to f of a times f of b. And so what a homomorphism is doing is showing that addition in R uh, behaves the same way as addition in S. Similarly, uh, multiplication in R behaves the same way as multiplication in S. So under this mapping. So what we're going to do is start by giving an example of a ring homomorphism. So let's consider the zero map. So the zero map between two rings, R and S, and let me change colors here. So let's see, we've got Z from R to S given by Z of R equals zero for every R in R is called the zero map. And so is this a ring homomorphism? Well, let's see. If we do Z of A plus B, that is equal to zero because A plus B is going to be some other element of R and then every element of R by definition gets mapped to zero. And now we know that zero itself can be written as zero plus zero. And so I'm gonna use some subscripts here. The zero here is going to be equal to S. And so we have that that's going to be equal to the zero in S plus the zero in S. And that's going to be equal in particular to Z of A plus Z of B. And we have that z of a times b is equal to zero element of s. And that's the same thing as zero times itself. But then each zero here corresponds to the image. One can correspond to the image of z of a. And one corresponds to the image of b under z. So what we have here is we've shown that the zero map is a ring homomorphism. One thing to note is that if R and S both contain non-zero elements, then the zero map isn't injective or surjective. Um, but the purpose here is just to show that it's a homomorphism. Uh, so let's consider another example. We're given a map that maps the real numbers to the real numbers with the following definition. Um, given any x that's a real number, we map x to the square root of x. And we want to show this is not a homomorphism. So let's start by considering f of a times f of b, excuse me, f of a times b. So that's going to be equal to the square roots of a times b. Now by properties of radicals, this is equivalent to square root of a times the square root of b, and that's precisely f of a times f of b. So we see that the first criteria of the homomorphism is satisfied. So let's see um, what happens when we try the other criteria. So here we've got f of a plus b, and that is equal to the square root of a plus b. Hmm, okay, so in a separate line, now I'm going to try f of a plus f of b, and that's going to equal the square root of a plus the square root of b. So here's where our contradiction happens. Since square root of a plus b does not equal the square root of b, excuse me, the square root of a plus b, square root of a plus the square root of b, f is not a homomorphism. Okay, so this is uh, 
part A of exercise 11 in section 3.3, um, B, C, uh, and D were assigned as homework. And so I want you to look at all of those uh, examples and those exercises and try to see which criteria um, or both uh, fail when we try to show that the map is a homomorphism. And so now let's just talk about some properties uh, that happen that we get uh, if we have a homomorphism between two rings. So here I'm assuming I have F uh, between a ring R and S. It's a mapping that's a homomorphism. And so we get the following properties. First is that when we take the zero element in the ring R, that's going to map to the zero element in the ring S. The next property is that if we take f of negative a, that's going to be equal to negative f of a for every a in R. If we have f of a minus b, that's going to be equal to f of a minus f of b for all a, b, and r. And then what else do we have? Um, so if we have the further condition that if r is a ring with identity, and f is surjective, then we also get the following conditions are satisfied. The first is that S is a ring with identity. So we have a homomorphism between two rings R and S, and if we assume that R is a ring with identity and F is surjective, then that tells us that not only does S have an identity, but that identity um, is the image of the identity um, in R under F. And then lastly, we have that whenever U is a unit, let's see, it looks like I got a little happy with my spelling of whenever there. Let's try again. Whenever U is a unit in R, then F of U is a unit in S. Also, we have the following equivalence. We have that F of U inverse, so the inverse of F of U is equal to F of U inverse. And so this is something that happens if we have a ring with identity and F is a surjective map. The last thing I want to note is just this corollary, and we'll provide it without proof. So if f from r to s is a homomorphism of rings, then the image of f is a subring of s, and we define the image of s um, uh, as follows, where we have it's a set of all s and s such that s is equal to f of r for some r in r. And it looks like, let me look, then the image of f is a subring of s. So it looks like... Uh, have a little bit of extra writing here. So where the image, let me just kind of tweak this. Let's see. Where, now I'll just kind of write here where the image of F is given by the following. Okay, so we don't always have this in general. We get this, um, so we don't always have that the image of F um, under R is a subring, but we do get this if F from R to S is a homomorphism. And so I want you to take note of some of the theorems that are not given proofs, like this corollary and some of the properties in the previous theorem. These types of questions I feel that you can figure out um, I'd be happy to talk about them in our in-person sessions on Thursday, but they're also really good candidates for midterm exam questions, and also the final in this particular case.